Edson, Alberta, a community a few hours outside of Edmonton, its population is just over 8,000 and prides itself on being a quiet, safe community. RCMP investigators continue to investigate the homicide. Of but in September 2008, this sleepy town turned upside down in the wake of a horrific crime that rocked its residents to the core as a young 14-year-old, Emily Stoffer, became a household name. It was a Saturday afternoon and Emily decided to take a walk on a trail much like the one behind me. But unfortunately, she never returned. And after that day, life for the Stoffer family changed forever. Choosing to meet at their home church, Edson Baptist, we met exactly a day after the one-year anniversary of Emily's death. Obviously still dealing with the effects of the horrific crime, we discussed Emily's life, the events leading up to that dreadful autumn day, how God has helped them through their grief, and the issue of forgiveness. Now we've just, you know, you've just crossed the year mark, the year anniversary. Um, how are you two doing through, throughout all of this? I think we're doing well. Again, we've been very conscious of um, the prayers of God's people, and I'm convinced that um, God has really used the prayers of his people to uphold us. I found when we began September and the leaves first started changing, that was harder on me than the anniversary day even, just thinking about that, that day mm -hmm. on, on the uh, 27th last year. Uh, so that, that really took me back, and it's one of those blindside things. You can get um, mm -hmm. prepared, you can get um, strengthened for an anniversary a day, but when you're blindsided by a memory or something that, that, mm -hmm. that uh, just, just twigs something, then that, that's the hardest thing to deal with. Described as a typical 14-year-old, Emily's parents say her love for music, photography, and people shone through. But her father will always remember a memorable conversation he had with Emily just a couple of weeks before her untimely passing that he now sees as a gift from God. I mentioned earlier a good talk with Emily in the middle of September on the way into Edmonton talking about heaven. I had uh, just preached a, a series through the summer called The Mystery of the Gospel and the last three weeks were on heaven from Revelation 21 and 22. And uh, Emily had said, that clears up so many questions I had. And she had a few more questions for me in that hour's drive in. But just the timing of that, uh, that mini-series right at the end of August too, and that conversation was another gift from God. It, it really was. Because little did either Terry or Juanita know that September 27, 2008, would be the last day they would see their daughter Emily alive. It simply started as another Saturday in the Stauffer household. What well, um, set up to work on my sermon in the afternoon just in the kitchen and, and she'd asked if um, I minded if she practiced piano and I said not at all, I would, I would be happy with that. And, and then after she finished practicing piano she had a babysitting appointment at uh, about 5.30 in the evening. But she decided she had enough time to go for a, a quick walk and uh, so uh, she actually borrowed my iPod and I helped her load something on it and she went out for a walk and was due back at this babysitting appointment at 5.30 and was, was planning to come home first. So when 5.30 rolled around, I knew something was, was up. Hopped on my bicycle and went looking for her and the first place I went was to the, um, the babysitting uh, family and um, they said they'd seen quite a commotion in, in one of the cul-de-sacs near, nearby, near our neighborhood. And so I, I just rode up to the police and uh, talked to them. Uh, I asked them if this had to do with someone walking on the trail, and, and they were naturally guarded and asked who I was. And so I explained, and, uh, and from then it was a case of uh, giving them a photo and just waiting for the identification. I didn't know exactly what had happened, but obviously knew something had happened uh, to her at, at that point. I gave them a picture and uh, before too long they came and uh, confirmed that it was uh, Emily that had been killed. And where were you at that time when you? I was on my way home from Red Deer. I had been at a piano conference and so Terry called me to let me know that something had happened and then confirmed later on. 
I didn't want to tell Juanita on the cell phone as she was driving, of course, but she really needed to know and she did well getting home. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it was actually, I think, the Lord's leading because it just gave me time on my own before I had to deal with the kids. Mm -hmm. so. And just probably the, the onslaught of everybody mm -hmm. surrounding mm -hmm. you. Yeah. It was during that lonely drive home that Juanita says she turned to a familiar song one that she had been drawn to for months, not knowing why, until that very night. We had just gotten a new CD that summer. It's called Come Weary Saints. And it's, it's just about suffering and, and dealing with that. And it was really interesting because I had actually said to Terry about, I don't know, a month before or something that there's one song on it called It Is Not Death to Die. And I was just... That was the only song that I, I just kept listening to it, and, and, and I think, how, how does that work? Like, really had to think through that. And then he would talk about other songs on that album, and I'd be like, huh, that one's on there? Because that was, I, I listened to the whole album, but that was the only one that stuck in my mind. But that was a lesson we had to learn, that it is not death to die. There's, um, life does not end with death. And, and this weary world is, it's just weary. Mm -hmm. And it's broken and um, we have to look ahead to Jesus. And that's what that song called us to do. And I think it was preparing us. It is not death to die, to leave this weary road. Join the saints who dwell on high, who found their home with God.